I am going to annoy Nevernight fans a lot. Nevernight by J. Kristoff is going to be a difficult book to review because while well, I'm going to talk about the many foundational elements here that are rock solid, this is still overall going to be a negative review. But before we get into all of the negatives, I want to talk about where my bar was set going into this book and why I expected something so great because I think that's an important context for a lot of potential readers who might pick it up. Right now on Goodreads, this is sitting at a 4.4 .4 out of 5 stars, which is extremely good. And aside from that, if you go from website to website, really, Nevernight is just touted. It's just said, oh, it's such a great execution of assassin fantasy, rock solid character, extraordinary world building, etc., etc., etc. Then there are the few people who, like myself, have a very strong aversion to one aspect of this story, which pretty much ruins it for us. And again, I hate that I'm in a position where I have to say that, but I want you to understand as a reader, if after hearing what I say here, decide to go pick it up, you are in like Russian roulette with yourself of whether or not that's going to be something that just obliterates any chances of you enjoying the story, or it's just another fun element you think is different and hyper stylized. But kicking off this review, again, this one was first brought to my radar actually by Piera Ford and her uh, adaptation of it here on YouTube, which I highly recommend. I actually think that's a great, enjoyable adaptation, probably the best YouTube fantasy short thing I've ever seen. Hats off to her and what she accomplished there. Uh, uh, and actually, the, one of the reasons it works so well is the big undigestible aspect of this book for me is removed by the innate nature of adapting it. So the fact that that's the case, I'm really hoping this eventually is adapted in a much grander, bigger medium, hopefully with Paraforge still attached, just saying, uh, and that way I can get through the story because I want you to take a special note there. I just said, get through the story. I DNF'd it. I almost never do DNF reviews. In fact, I don't think I have done one in over a year. It's not something I typically indulge into, but I need to talk about this element of this story. It's something I'm going to have a lot to say on. Hmm. <laughs> you fans know what I'm already talking about, but please keep in mind that again, I did not finish. I cannot speak on the conclusion of these story elements. So let's talk about the foundational structure that was built so far and why I think it's really extraordinary. In terms of atmosphere, character work, world building, and magic system, Jay Kristoff to me was just hitting home run after home run. Having this character who was left destitute after watching her father killed for being a traitor. That's literally the first couple pages. I'm not spoiling anything. If you think setup is spoiler, I don't know what to tell you. Just get out. Anyway, seeing her just left so destitute in a horrific city that is so well communicated to us, the readers, to be this grimy, grungy, uh, gentleman bastards-esque crime world. If that sounds appealing to you, you're going to enjoy all of these elements as well as I did. And I want to again communicate that. I enjoyed these elements. We also have these CD organizations like the Red Church. So many of these elements work for those of us fantasy fans like myself who really enjoy a personality filled fantasy world that is kind of just grimy. And Jay Kristoff does not back down from those more grim dark elements. If a murder happens, he is going to let you know uh, straight up how gross and horrible it is. Whether it's describing the feeling of a bone grating on a knife or just the fecal matter excreted when someone passes on. And I deeply enjoy Mia. As a protagonist, her personality glows. Totally 100% works. I think if I had any criticism, I would say it's that her personality is overflowing, which maybe is contributed to that again factor that I cannot get over. Let's go ahead and dive into that, shall we? Assassin-based fantasy is usually a misfire to me because I find it to be too try hard for lack of a better word. Authors who try and write assassin type fantasy very often go over the top with the assassin elements, which fans of the genre seem to enjoy. Like why would you show up to assassin based fantasy and not expect to get some badass assassin elements at the forefront? It's just for me as someone who doesn't particularly like assassins as a premise, it becomes obnoxious and never night does them up to the point where now even the writing style to me is feeling very try hard. Uh, if I had to describe it in a way that is over the top, like this book insists on describing everything, to me, reading this book came across like an angsty teenager read 
Shakespeare, and then tried to shift that similar prose style, abusing metaphor and simile left and right, while listening to a cringy early 2000s punk rock album. That sounds over the top, it is a little bit, but let me be clear here. There are metaphors and similes littered throughout this book that do not make sense. I'm not saying they're abused in just their overuse, which they are, but it is the fact that several of them I had to stop reading, go and sit and think, like, what is he even trying to go for? And after I make a mental leap where I can draw the connection, I go, oh, yeah, that doesn't work. There are also these footnotes littered throughout the story that I, again, found obnoxious, but I could see the appeal of it. And then the comparisons within this story, everything that is compared, is compared in a ridiculously over-the-top manner. Uh, the one example that is talked about frequently online is someone kicked in the nuts so hard it cripples their unborn children. You read that line and you just like that, all right, cool. That would be fun if it was just like a one instance or maybe a couple times, but it's everything. And then there's the other very famous uh, simile metaphor here that's been touted about online and put in reviews everywhere, where someone's beauty is compared to a fresh suicide, hence the angsty early 2000s punk vibes to me. Maybe I'm the only one drawing that connection. Hey, look, an over-the-top connection. Another example of one that I have to read off here because I couldn't remember off the top of my head, but just d doesn't make sense to me is, the girl felt the words in her chest, in the deepest, darkest places, where the hope children breathe and adults mourn withered and fell away, floating like ashes on the wind. What? See how I mean? It's like, it's someone read super old school flowery prose and then tried to like cram lyricism in from those rock albums you now cringe at that you used to like. I hate being one of these people because I think it's so condescending to say, but it feels like it's written for a very young audience, which is confusing with how gory and over-the-top violent it is. Like, I would say a 13-year-old would really enjoy that way of describing something, but I also wouldn't hand a 13-year-old this book. And again, I'm not trying to insinuate that adults that like this are somehow dumb or have the maturity of a 13-year-old. Freaking love Avatar The Last Airbender. There's no way I'm trying to talk down about stuff that's aimed at a younger audience. It just seems like the way he's describing things is definitely aimed at a younger audience who would think that's edgy and cool. And the frustration for me as a reviewer here is so high because all the other fundamental blocks work. And if I was going to do another over-the-top comparison, which honestly I'm guilty of in my reviews quite often, but a review and writing fantasy are different. It feels like all the elements to a badass house that is like the dream of someone who wants to read a book of this style are put into place. All the core elements are there and you're like, yes, I want to be in that house. And then the entire outside is painted in a blend of leopard and zebra print. And of course, it makes the entire process of living there unbearable. Like if the vassal in which the information delivered to you of the story is so heavily tainted, I can't then enjoy the content of what's being given to me. And that's so frustrating. Like, damn it. I wanted this to be one that was another rock solid fantasy book for me to read this year because it's been a pretty kick ass year for me for fantasy so far. And unfortunately, this won't be joining those ranks. I will definitely be checking out other books from Jay Kristoff, hoping he does not make this writing style something that is a staple of his career. But there's a lot on display here that shows me a lot of talent. The guy knows what he's doing. He just decided to do something that does not vibe with me in any way, shape, or form. Never night. But could have been. I also want to give credit to the cover artist, Jason Chan. This is actually a really wonderful cover that I think stylistically is very appropriate for what is maintained within the book. And as someone who has been so vocal about covers, I don't and do like within the fantasy genre because I think this genre has a problem right now. I want to continue to give credit to artists who kick ass and this one kicks ass. But ending on a high note, because I like to do that, I do want to say that I found the character work here to be maybe Jay Kristoff's shining spot as an author, whether it's Trick or Mia, the two I feel like he really put the most time and effort into, they really were what tempted me to go as far in this book as I did. I stopped around the three-fifths mark, and what was propelling me to go to that point was how attached to them I became. And I wouldn't want to remove these characters from a story written in this style, because it was clearly written that their personalities were meant to be a reflection of how this book was being written. But 
I, 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 I'm ashamed to say almost, like I feel that. I feel like I'm doing a really bad job, but I need to be honest that the method in which this story was delivered, unfortunately, ended up in the story itself being dead on arrival. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think of this review or this book in the comments down below. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Have a good one, y'all. Peace.